Good morning, good evening, good afternoon for everyone on this uh, global watch call. Thank you very much for coming. Today is Tuesday, the 6th of May, 2023. And this is 6 a.m. Jerusalem time watch. And this uh, watch is uh, being hosted by Mary Faust of the Indigenous Watch. And uh, we thank you very much, Mary, for this hour. And um, we bless you in the mighty name of Jesus for this special hour that we have today. And may the Lord really inspire and reveal great things for all our watchers today, what you're going to be sharing with your host. In the mighty name of Jesus, all yours, Mary. Thank you. Margaret, um, for Chanel, would you like to change the date? Because you said May instead of June. Okay. Oh, excuse me. What shall I do? Shall I June start 6th. again? <laughs> no, no, okay. no. We'll, we'll correct it now. June 2nd, everybody. Keep going. June, June this, this June the 6th. <laughs> 6th June of June. June. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much. Bless That's you. okay. That's all right. I'm probably still back in May myself. <laughs> Um, so we're going to just open in prayer. I'm going to ask my um, co-leader, Mary Karaka from New Zealand to open in prayer for us. And then I will um, introduce our, our, our guest tonight. Mary Karaka, would you open? Thank you, Father. Thank you that in your presence is the fullness of joy. Holy Spirit, come upon us. Give us the hearing heart and the hearing ears to hear what you say to us today. Unite us as one on this forum in your presence. In Jesus' holy name, amen. 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 <clears throat> Thank you so much. Um, I'm not going to go into a, a um, the elongated version of Human's story because I want him to tell his story and his, um, his current work um, that he is doing. But I am just so excited um, with, the, with just at the end of the Isaiah 62 fast, and even praying for the fulfillment of Israel and the destiny of, of the, the people that God has chosen for himself, but also the brothers, the brothers of Israel, the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and um, Human is working with, um, mm. from his own um, lineage and his heritage and the people that he represents he is doing very important work. And I think we could go into long um, um, chats and, and prayers for the, the fulfillment even of Isaiah 19 that we read about for the Middle East. And so um, I am so very um, honored and been honored to have met Human. I met Human in Germany back in last year when we were together in Germany for the first time is when I met Human Khalili. And recently we were on the on the Israel journey in Jordan recently and learned to know him a little bit better and knowing the the, the story in his in his work currently. So I just want us to welcome him and, and so excited to have him be on this indigenous prayer call today. So what's going to happen is we're going to go into a time of worship. The worship song that I selected is a song that is sung in, in, in the Hebrew and the, um, um, I don't know if it's Aramaic or um, Arabic maybe, and the words that you'll see in print um, is, is actually a worship song of the, the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the fullness of time that we are all praying into the acceleration of what is to take place with the fullness of time. And we all get to participate as the engrafted ones, right, of uh, the Gentile community. So <clears throat> I'm going to um, have Margaret um, play that worship song for us. We praise you, Jesus. That you are most worthy and worthy of all praise, worthy of every life that you have bought with the price. And the exchange price is your blood. I want to read from Jeremiah 49, the last verse. It says, but it shall be in the latter days, at the end of the days, that I will reverse the captivity 
and restore the fortunes of Elam, says the Lord. I believe our speaker tonight will share what he has to share has directly related is directly related to this and the fulfillment of promise in scripture that the people that whom he has created Israel yes but also the brothers of Israel the brother the the, the sons of Abraham Isaac and Jacob that there will be a restoration he says that he will reverse the captivity and recover and restore the fortunes of these ones. I am so excited to um, for Human to share with us. Human Kalili, as I said, is is a person that I've met in in Germany last year, but also in Israel just in the last the last journey to Israel. And he will tell you his story. But one of the one of the fun facts about Human that I thought I thought he was joking is when he shared that. You know, the movie, the Pikes are movie, the cars. And he said, there's a human car. And I and I just laughed thinking that's funny. But um, but really, there is a human car. So maybe um, just in, in your um, as you listen to him, human has experienced life and many, many different um, levels. But that's just a fun fact for you that human is um, the destiny that he is that he is um, walking in and the story that he is walking out the narrative of the father for his people and for the Jewish people and that he's walking out is, is just a very promising and it is something that we all need to work, pray into and support. So would you welcome Human Kalili? Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for having me. It's an honor to be here. So many familiar faces. Um, so uh, I'm going to take you back to Hurenhut, Germany. When I was in Hurenhut, I there God had done so much pruning in my life uh, because of the pandemic and because of people losing their minds. I live in the San Francisco Bay Area. So not only do I live in the bluest state in the, the most liberal state in the entire union, I live in the most liberal part of the most liberal state. So the lockdowns here were insane. It was over the top. I was literally flying to Texas to go to church on Sundays. So uh, I went to uh, Huron Hut, and that's a much longer story how I ended up there. But when I was in Huron Hut, I uh, came across two people that were just phenomenal. One is Shirley, who is on this call. And the other one is a Messianic Jew. I don't know if I'm allowed to say her name, but we all know who she is. Um, and I was, I was so impressed by this Messianic Jew, this woman, that I called her and I, and I, and I, I pulled her aside and I said, listen, if I fly to Israel, will you uh, get all the Messianic Jews to lay hands on me and pray over me? And she said, yes. So I jumped on a plane. So for context, I'm totally single, no girlfriend, no wife, no kids. I don't own a house. I'm free like a bird. So I jumped on a plane. I went out to, uh, to Israel and I didn't realize it was Yom Kippur and I didn't know what Yom Kippur meant. I honestly, you know, I was just kind of just wanting God to burst open heaven and all it, it was, you know, uh, 20, 25 Messianic Jews were laying hands on me. Shofars were being blown. Flutes were being played. It was just like a smorgasbord of praise. And I'm a filmmaker. I shot the first movie ever on a cell phone and qualified for the Academy Awards in 2012. Dolly Parton wrote the music for it. The film is called Olive. You can't see it yet because I haven't really released it. I, I took it back. And I said, hey, can you guys pray for my filmmaking? Can you pray for my art? Can you just ask God to open up heaven? So the reason I tell you all of that is because... I'm giving God all of the glory for everything that's happened. This is not me at all. This is God, 100%. So I come back to the U.S. and I, um, you know, doing my thing. And this one woman from L.A. calls and says, hey, you don't know me. I don't know you, but uh, I need your help. And I said, what's going on? And she said, I, the Western media isn't covering what's happening in Iran. So what's happening in Iran, this revolution probably started roughly around, 
I don't know, September 25th ish. So this woman calls me in, in uh, November and uh, she says, we have to get the Western media to, to take notice of this. And I said, okay, what should we do? She said, we need to paint murals. Now I don't paint murals at all, not even a little bit. And I said, okay, what do you want me to do? She said, can you get us a wall in San Francisco? I called one of my friends, my friend called the art commissioner. The art commissioner said, yes, you can have a wall. I get to pick the artist, I get to pick the design. I, you know, and I get to pick the wall. I said, fine. The wall goes up. It's a good wall. It's nice. It's a nice, it's a nice uh, mural. I called the artist. I said, let's take a picture for Instagram and, uh, and then uh, I'll post it. I posted the picture. The picture goes viral, goes around the world a couple thousand times. And one of the people who sees it miraculously is the vice mayor of Jerusalem, Flor Hassan. And Flor Hassan messages me and says, I want murals supporting the Iranian people here in Jerusalem. Now that is an absolute miracle. So I said, okay, what do we do? She said, you have to jump on a plane and you have to meet me face to face because I'm not gonna do this over Zoom and I'm not gonna do this over a phone call. I said, fine, free like a bird, why not? So I jump on a plane, I get to Jerusalem, I'm sitting in her office. I said, do you have a wall? She said, no. I said, do you have uh, an artist? She said, no. I said, am I paying for it? She said, yes. I said, okay, great. So uh, lo and behold, 26 days later, all right, I gotta share my screen here. Uh, 26 days later, the first mural goes up. And, okay, great, I just put that there. And, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm not super adept on how to use this. Okay, great. So this was the first mural in Jerusalem. Now, this mural is 21 feet long and it's 15 feet high. Sorry, it's 21 feet long, 15 feet wide. And uh, those four women, the woman, this woman here in the top left is Massa Amini. She was the first one that got killed, murdered by the Islamic regime. This woman's name is Serena. This woman's name is Fereshte. And this woman's name is Nika. These two are 16 years old. These two are Kurdish. So Iran, uh, I don't know how well you know your history, has the, the longest written history of any country in the world. They're number one. And um, uh, for a very long time, even today, Iran was like the United States in the sense that they took in all the refugees. So in Iran, there's 55 languages spoken. In this mural, you, uh, you have this original symbol, which I'll show you again later, but this is a lion with a sword in its hand with the sun rising in its background. This is a Zoroastrian symbol. This is the original flag of Iran before the Islamic revolution. And then uh, to be very clear, this is a woman-led revolution. This revolution is entirely woman-led. And so in all of my murals, I have this picture and I have this picture. And this is a woman riding a lion with a sword in her hand as a nod to the women. So up here is Flora Hassan, there's me, the artist. So I design these on paper here and then I give them to the muralist and I, and so these women are ultimately fighting for one thing. One, they don't wanna wear a hijab anymore. And so the artist, as I was giving her my interpretation of what I wanted said, if it's all about hair, let's unite these women with their hair. I said, beautiful. This is the water lily, it's the flower of Iran. And here you have the words woman, life, freedom in Hebrew, Arabic, Farsi, and English. Okay, so this is the first mural. This is my first one. You know, I thought I'm gonna be one and done. This is it. Lo and behold, uh, I go back to, now, now one thing I wanna tell you about this mural here. This woman fetish there, means so much to me. She wasn't protesting and she wasn't protesting either, by the way, she just had a little bit of her hair hanging out of her hijab. Fereshte Deh was watching the protests from her rooftop and the Islamic regime is so merciless that they stopped killing the protesters and they started shooting the people watching. So she was shot just for watching. And so at her funeral, 
that's her daughter. And every Persian in the world knows this picture. It's absolutely heartbreaking. And when I saw this picture, I just remember looking at it for, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes every night, my eyes full of tears, my eyes are full of tears now. And what you have in, in Fereshte, this woman here, is a low-income low Kurdish woman in a very poor village and her beautiful daughter. So that's why I put her in. And, so, and, and uh, I don't know if it was someone on Instagram, a journalist said, this moment, you know, we're all Fereshte's daughter. All of us. This is all of us. Okay, so uh, can you see that? Yeah, I'll put it over here. So that's the press that came out the first day, and there's the big celebration, and it was a big deal, you know. Um, this was the first mural in the entire Middle East supporting the Iranian people. Okay, so this is the second mural, and this one's in Nazareth. Okay, so these 15 people were all murdered by the Islamic regime. This woman here, I put her in because she works, uh, she's from the Knesset. Her name is Ruth Wasserman. She's a South African Jew. And she, uh, I, I hire her to, to help me get walls and work with mayors. She's able to navigate the complexity of Israel. So let me tell you a little bit about this. These, because, so this little girl, he, well, um, let me see what the next slide is. Okay. So these 15 people all murdered by the Islamic regime. This gentleman here, I think he won a gold medal in the Olympics for uh, wrestling. This kid was 19 years old. He was like the best chef in Iran. I mean, you, you just have this conglomeration of amazing youth who want freedom and they're just mercilessly being murdered. This one's in Nazareth. And as we all know, Nazareth is Jesus's hometown. He lived there from the age of four to 29. But a couple of things about Nazareth that you need to be aware of. Nazareth is 100% Arab, and it's 70% Muslim, 30% Christian. There are no Jews in Nazareth, none. And so uh, I got some pushback when I did this, but uh, by the grace of God, it went up anyway. The word Nazareth comes from the word Nazare, and Nazare can be found in uh, Isaiah 11.1. 1. And in Isaiah 11.1, 1, it says, from the stump of Jesse will come a nazare, a branch, a shoot. So this is my visual explanation of Nazareth, the stump of Jesse, and then the living branch. So once again, you've got the woman running line with a sword in her hand. You've got the Zoroastrian symbols of Iran. And then from this point on, I always include the flag of Jerusalem. All of my murals are pointing back to Jerusalem, but I changed the flag of Jerusalem. I'll show you in a different picture, but this is the line of Judah. And normally the line of Judah is outside the temple Mount, but I care more about biblical prophecy and Christian symbolism. So I have the line of Judah going into the Eastern gates, the golden gate. Since I live so close to uh, San Francisco, I always say from golden gates to golden gates. And I think the Golden Gate Bridge was named after this Golden Gate, actually. Um, here are the names and the ages. So as you can see, one girl was seven, one boy was nine. I mean, you're, you're talking about basically young adults, teenagers, children that they're mercilessly murdering. And then here are the symbols. So as you can see, the background to here is the Eastern Gate. Uh, and then here, so it, one, one, I, I don't know if you guys care about symmetry or anything, but in design, you're constantly, so, so in all of the murals, there's three lions, three lions next to one another. And then the reason for the gold tablecloth is because this is another way to point back to Jerusalem, because Jerusalem is known as the city of gold. And this gold is pointing back. Uh, there's a lot more details, but let's just keep going. Oh, yeah, this is everything. So if you ever make it to Israel, in Nazareth is a very powerful uh, Arab Christian woman named Rania. And Rania was sort of holding my hand, nav helping me navigate Nazareth. And she said to me, she said, it's time, Human, it's time. I said, it's time for what? She said, Human, it's time for the Esthers of the world to rise up. I am an Arab Esther. And I said, oh my gosh, that's such a beautiful, this is a woman-led revolution, Esther. So 
starting with the second mural onward, I started incorporating this. It's time for the esters of the world to rise up. And so there it is in uh, Hebrew, Arabic, Farsi, and English. Okay, let's keep going. Um, okay, so in Iran, one of the things they do to the women who, because they, you know, at one point they killed 700, it's well over 1,500 now. They uh, tortured, they have 19,000 in prison. And they, uh, they really wanted to terrorize the Persian people. So what they do is they take a little gun full of pellets and they'll shoot out the eye of one of the female protesters. And they, they really target the, the very attractive females. You know, they want to, they really want to scare the Persian people. So this is one of the female protesters. Her name is Ghazal, very beautiful woman. And as I was praying about this, I just felt God say, human, like, okay, you two amazing murals, which God downloaded into my mind for the dead. Let's honor the living. I said, okay. So uh, there's an artist in Budapest and uh, looked at a bunch of her art. So just so you know, I'm a filmmaker. And when I design murals, I'm just looking at this as one frame of a movie. So there's a lot of symbolism. There's a big story. I'm not just painting a face with a few colors. I'm really trying to, you know, tell something much bigger than, than what, a traditional mural might be. So uh, this this uh, artist in Budapest, she does something really cool with people with one eye. She does that. And I, I saw this image and I was like, wow, okay, we have an opportunity here to do something. So I chose biblical animals to cover the eye of the female protesters that were shot out, maimed. So this is my third mural and it's in, it's right outside the Islamic Museum of Art. This is the centerpiece of their exhibition on uh, art that um, is around the Isla uh, Iranian revolution. So they have an exhibition there, which uh, started just a few months ago. And this is the piece that you see when you walk past it. So I chose a peacock and a peacock is mentioned in uh, Song of Solomon. The background here is the Mount of Olives and the Garden of Gethsemane. And then down here, you'll see the symbols, which you can't see because I'm standing there, but it's, uh, you know, the flag of Jerusalem and then the lion holding the sword and a woman riding. So, and uh, yeah, so it, there were some complications uh, with this one. Um, and if, uh, you know, if they continue this exhibition, I, I might switch this one out. All right, let's go to the next. Oh yeah, so here, this is uh, somebody, whoops, sorry, give me one second. Hold on, sorry, this is, I knew this was gonna happen. Uh, let me turn off the music. <laughs> this is what I wanted to show you. So this is just an idea of the Islamic Museum, the building, this one is just so you can kinda get a cool view of it. Uh, okay, so let's go to the next one. This woman is a, uh, is a nurse, she's a midwife, and she too got her eye shot out for protesting. And so uh, I went ahead and did the, the sort of the same theme. So so far, we've got two in Jerusalem, one in Nazareth. This is in a town north of Tel Aviv, this next mural called Netanya. And so this is the mural here. And uh, let me see if I can turn. Okay, great. So uh, here you've got Nilufar, and this bird here is the nightingale. And the nightingale is the bird of Iran. So once again, you see the words, Esters of the world rise up, woman, life, freedom in Hebrew and English. Um, there are no, there are no Arabs who really live in Netanya, so I didn't, I didn't write it in Arabic there. And then uh, I put a symbol that I felt God downloaded into my mind, which is the Trinitarian crown representing the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then there's the Holy Spirit in the form of a dove surrounded by seven, seven flaming tongues of fire held by an inverted menorah, and then the, the sword of the Spirit all uh, leading down to the, the flag of Jerusalem. 
So there's that. Um, and then there's the woman writing the line with the sword. And then this is the, this is the seal of Netanya. All right, so that's the fourth one. And then the fifth one is this one. And it's the same woman that you saw earlier, Ghazal. And this mural is also in Netanya. It's 100 feet away from the one you just saw. So what you have here is Ghazal. And this bird here is the bird of Israel. It's called the hoopo. So the nightingale is mentioned in the Song of Solomon. And the hoopo is mentioned in Leviticus. It's one of the birds you're not allowed to eat. So uh, I wanted to have sister murals. They originally promised me the walls next to each other and then the politics got in the way. And so this one's a hundred feet away from the other one. But in the background of this, now I'm in Netanya, this is in Netanya, is the Eastern Gate. I brought the Eastern Gate back. Uh, if you ever get a chance to get up to the Temple Mount um, and walk around and pray, Go to where the Eastern Gate is and pray over there. You will feel such a level of spiritual warfare around the Eastern Gate. It's unlike anything. We, uh, me and my friends almost got kicked out for, for praying near the Eastern Gate. So um, I'm really believing, you know, the line of Judah will descend upon the Mount of Olives and walk through this gate. Uh, so here's the whole thing. Woman, life, freedom. And then you've got Esther's of the world rise up, the seal of Netanya, the woman. So I'm trying to have things that unite all the murals because, uh, you know, there's a theme here and uh, I want to be consistent. Okay, so those are the five murals in Israel. It's a miracle that there's five. Uh, and um, so... I was meeting with the, uh, the people of um, Israel, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and they said, uh, you should do one in, in LA. And I said, okay. So up to this point, I'm, I'm funding everything myself, haven't really been able to raise any money, but I've uh, been praying a lot about it. <laughs> and uh, okay, I said, okay, this is probably gonna be the last one before I go broke. So, um, this was the this was the um the invitation and it was on june 2nd so just a few days ago this is azadi tower it means freedom tower and it's in it's like the the you know paris has the eiffel tower you know Cal, uh, united states has got a bunch of you know statue of liberty golden gate bridge so many different this is kind of the the, the big symbol in iran it means freedom tower and uh, it's, it's, it's very meaningful to the Persians. Um, all right, so this next mural focuses in on this. Uh, let me see here. Okay, so. Okay, so those five 15-year-old girls are dancing and they're dancing with their hair showing. Now this is punishable with a hundred lashes and a lot of prison time. And they did it anyway. And and you know, I, I'm sure we all take this for granted in the United States, but you just you cannot do this. These girls were arrested. They were put in prison. It looked like they were beaten up. Um, I have no idea where they are now, but I really wanted to honor this courage to show your hair and to dance because both things are illegal. So uh, this is Azadi Tower. So I, this last image, I created a future of Iran. What, I, what I'm hoping for the future of Iran could look like and could be. So just imagine a massive party in front of Azadi Tower with those five girls and tens of thousands of people cheering them on. Oh, before that, I want you to be aware of this verse, Jeremiah 49, 38. This verse exists and there's no getting around it and no Western preacher ever preaches on it and no Eastern preacher ever preaches on it and no rabbi ever preaches on it. 
This verse exists and it is entirely ignored. Before Iran was called Iran, it was called Persia. Before it was called Persia, it was called Alam. And Alam is the birthplace of Cyrus, Cyrus the Great, King Cyrus. And God says in Jeremiah 49, 38, I will set my throne in Elam. And do you know what this means? At the very least, it means this one thing. God says four or five times in the Bible, I'm going to set my throne in Jerusalem, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. And then he says, I'm also setting a throne in Elam, which at the very least means God's going to have two thrones. So I want you to, Go to your pastor and ask him to preach a sermon on this verse and then send me that sermon. Um, so that's there. And then this is Elam. For those of you who don't know, like, I don't believe it. I don't believe it's Iran. It is. Here it is. This is Elam. This is it. So Persia, Iran, Elam, the ancient name of Iran. All right. So anyway, back to Azadi Tower, back to that verse. It's all relevant for this last mural. That is the, the mural in LA. So once again, the common theme, the woman riding lion with the sword, the lion of Judah going into the Eastern Gate, the original Zoroastrian symbol of Iran. Iran was entirely Zoroastrian until 650 AD. And then uh, the... Islam started seeping its way through. Iran didn't entirely fall to Islam until 1300 AD. Um, okay, so look, I put this verse in the center of downtown LA. I will set my throne in Elam. And when I gave my talk uh, for this mural, the crown princess of Iran flew out. And so the Shah has a son named Reza Pahlavi. Reza's wife is a woman named Yasmin. Yasmin flew out and we, you know, we had a big presentation and big unveiling. And I rem and it was, it was thrown by the Persian Jews. So one thing, um, in the world, there are 18 million Jews, 18 million. Of the 18 million Jews, 400,000 are Persian Jews from Iran, Iranian Persian Jews. And so uh, at least 220,000, 250,000 of them live in the U.S. You know, I'd say roughly 100, 150,000 live in Israel. And then the, the last 10, 15,000 are just sprinkled throughout the rest of the world. And when I, when I gave my talk, I said, listen, this uh, verse is there. I reminded them. And I said, God loves Iran. God loves the Persian people. Look, in with Cyrus, you had a, a man who not only allowed the Jews to return, but he paid for the uh, temple to be rebuilt. With Esther, you have a woman in Iran saving the Jews. And then don't ever forget the Magi. The Magi are all Persian. They came from Iran. And as I was designing this, two things. One is, one of my friends called me and she goes, God keeps telling me for you to put the star in that the wise men followed. He's like, why is that? I said, because the wise men were Persian. And she said, oh my gosh. So there it is. I put it in because one of my prophetic friends dreamt about it. And then, uh, can I move this? Oh yeah, great. So, um, ah, shoot. I'm so sorry. I knew this was going to happen. Uh, let me get it back up. Here you've got uh, here you've got um, the same key that I was telling you about earlier. And then the guy who helps me design this said, if you're going to put that key in, you have to put Isaiah 2222. I'll place on his shoulder the key to the house of David. It's a messianic scripture. But look, I want you to know something. As the murals keep coming, I'm becoming bolder and bolder. I mean, Esther's of the world rise up. I will set my throne in Elam. Uh, you know, uh, the key to the house of David. It's, I mean, this thing is, this thing's a, this thing's a sermon right here. <laughs> this, this mural's a sermon. 
So anyway, those are the, the murals. Um, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen here if I can figure out how to do this. Uh, but uh, yeah, so those are the murals. So you're asking like, uh, let's see here. Uh, anyone know how to stop sharing? Oh, there it is. So um, where am I at? Where am I at today? So I have spent all my money. Uh, each one of these murals costs about 10 grand. And, you know, I've done six, so you can do the math. And uh, I, I need to raise money. It's, it's, a, it's a weird thing. It's an interesting thing because you look at this and you have to say to yourself, how is this even happening? How is this even possible? There's only one, there's only one country in the entire Middle East supporting the Iranian people fighting for their freedom. It's not Afghanistan. It's not Syria. It's not Lebanon. It's not the UAE. It's not Saudi Arabia. It's Israel. Israel is the only one standing. And listen, murals in America are wonderful in Canada and Europe and Australia, but they're expected. Everyone's expecting a mural to be in those countries, but no one's expecting there to be a mural in the Middle East, standing with the Iranian people. The Iranian women want to show their hair. So... All of this is a miracle. And so God is providing the walls. He's providing the designs. He, you know, provides me people in Israel that help me navigate the country. They roll out the red carpet for me, the whole nine yards. But he hasn't provided the money, which is... So when I did this presentation, I asked the, the wealthier Persian Jews in LA to help and still waiting to hear back. But to complete all of this, in case anybody's got a rich uncle or something. Uh, it's going to be about 200 grand. 200 grand to finish all of the murals in Israel. And uh, I don't know if you guys know Daniel Lim, president of IHOP. Anyway, he called me and he said, Human, God gave me a number. Because originally I thought, okay, 40, that's a biblical number. I'll try to do 40. He said, God told me 18. And then that number was confirmed the next day by that same Messianic Jew that prayed over me in Israel. And she said, I don't know why God told me that to call you and tell you the number 18. So I really wanted to do 18 murals. Even though I've done six, I've really only done five because the murals that really count are in Israel. So where are we at today? Uh, I'm broke. And Paris just asked for another mural and Washington DC wants a mural, which is wonderful. I mean, listen, I can do murals till the cows come home. But I, I just I need God to send manna from heaven I, I need the provision so that's sort of where i'm at anyway sorry i think that went too long that's it what a wonderful story um and it's not just a story this is like the the narrative of freedom life and women and in order to pray into the future of any nation guess what we have to pray for? We have to pray for women who are the life carriers. They are the life givers. It doesn't mean that the men are not important, but we are talking about women. So if we're gonna be praying for the, for the future of Iran, the future of Persia, as is written in the Bible, so we have to pray. And so we have, what, with, with the time that we have left, I think what we need to pray is for boldness, even as um, Human just shared that with each mural, there's an increase in boldness. I am thinking of the scripture from Habakkuk and it's talking about um, the watchman really, right? And, and so um, Habakkuk too, it says, and the Lord answered me and said, write the vision. And engrave it plainly upon tablets that everyone who passes may be able to read it quickly and easily as he hastens by. But the vision is yet for an appointed time and it hastens to the end, the fulfillment. It will not deceive or disappoint, though it tarry, wait for it. I keep thinking of these murals as, as a, it, it tells a story, it tells, it speaks. Art speaks, the art form is a powerful tool to use for, 
to see the fulfillment of, of, of the times that we're living in, but also to raise awareness. But, but when it's done with, with somebody like Human at the helm, who is a believer, and he is using it as a tool to, to merge the, the sons of Abraham. And so to bring reconciliation, yes. And so on this watch, we pray many times for forgiveness as indigenous people. And I would say that the Persians are indigenous to their own people group and to their own lands. And so are the Jewish people. They are the indigenous people of their lands. And so with the time that we have remaining, we have very, um, thank you, Human, for all that you shared. But let me just add this. He didn't say his personal story. He escaped Iran just before the regime began with his mother. He was only three years old. And I think it's so important to say that because this is not just somebody that has that is watching from afar. This is somebody that who has really been impacted and has lived the life of of being um, um, Persian and by by his by his bloodline, but also having been raised by his mother. And so um, the rest of the story continues. And so let us let's go into prayer and let's keep it to short um, short prayers. Um, we don't have time for questions. I'm sorry, Human, if you want to look over, if there's any questions in the chat, feel free. But we want to pray. So we want to pray for boldness, yes, and the key of David that unlocks, right? And also, and, and opens, it opens and also locks up. And also for the Esthers to arise, Esthers in, in our day to arise, Persian, Jew in Persian, and also we said the future of Iran and for divine provision. We are praying in agreement that the necessary funding that is that is needed to come forth. So here we go. In the chat, Kuman has put the um, information for if you want to donate to his ministry. All right, we're going to open. No, the, no pressure, the, no pressure. I just, I thought yeah. somebody asked where it was. So I just yes. responded. So, Feel free. So let's let's keep it short and to the point. We have like 10 minutes. Don't everybody speak at once. I'll start. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this group. Thank you for this gathering. God, uh, one thing I forgot to mention is you want me to remind everyone that the Persians have been the friends of the Jews for 3,000 years, and they've only been enemies for less than 50. Please don't let 50 years outweigh 3,000 years. I know Iran wants to obliterate the Jews, the Iranian regime, but God, you have a bigger plan and you want Iran and Israel to be friends. And God, when Iran becomes stable, the whole Middle East becomes stable. And um, the number one sponsor of terrorism needs to, to go down. You say in Jeremiah 49, 38, you will destroy Elam's kings and officials. Destroy them today, get rid of them immediately. Let the women be free. Let them show their hair and dance in Jesus' name. Amen. Go ahead. Open your mic and pray. Let's just, let's just pray. Amen. I just want to say something that really caught my attention. And uh, when I saw what you wrote, uh, Habakkuk 2.2, 2, uh, Joe, and Isaiah 22.22. 22. For me, two is a number of kneeling down. So, Father, I want to pray, and it is no um, mistake. It is not a coincidence. So, Habakkuk 2, 2, Isaiah 22, 22. So, Father, we just want to pray tonight, oh, Lord God, this morning, this evening, whatever it is, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord, for the work that human is doing. And we humbly pray, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God, that you have the key of David. Thank you, Lord God, that today we together we are writing we are writing the vision with human father we are one father we are on our knees praying lord god that you will open the doors of heaven so that human will be given what he needs to continue the rest of the uh, uh, murals father so that the people will realize lord god what's going on in iran and give you all the glory in yes. the mighty name of jesus amen amen shanta 
Heavenly Father, we just thank you. We praise you, Lord. Father, we ask that you'll bless whom and Lord God. And Lord, we ask that you'll download your spirit, Lord God, your anointing on him. That will just supersede anything he's done now, Lord. That it'll bring your word to the world, Lord. That every time they look at it, they'll know what you are speaking through the murals. And yes. Father, we ask that you'll open the heavens, Lord. You open the heavens mm -hmm. and pour out your blessing. You said, when you pour it out, nobody can contain it. We want that for whom and Lord God, so that he can go in peace and not worry and do the murals that you have called him mm -hmm. to do, that you will anoint him, anoint his hand and his mind. In the mighty name of Yeshua, we pray. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I have the scripture, uh, Isaiah 43, uh, uh, 19. See, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. And what I, I received was that it, it's like a way maker to bring God's way in. And Father, I thank you that, that you are the way maker and you make, you use that with uh with your power lord you're bringing forth you're showing mm -hmm. your new thing that you are doing in the earth and thank you that the enemy has to give room has to make way in jesus mighty name amen thank you um i i realize this is written about cyrus but i want to um say for you homan our dear brother the, the Lord says in Isaiah 45, I will go before you and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of bronze and cut the bars of irons, and I will give you the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that you may know that I, Yahweh the Lord, who call you by name and the God of Israel, for Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, my elect, I called you. And I just want to say thank you, Heavenly Father, for the calling on our dear brother's life. I thank you, Father, when you give us a vision. You are our covenant-keeping Father, and you give us the provision. You give him the protection. You make his path straight. You connect him to the right people. And that, Lord, these 18 murals that are in your heart to be revealed and to bring a breakdown of these walls of iron, that, Father God, your perfect will, will be done. Your kingdom will come. And we say, Father, we, we speak release for the finances to come to human that are being held in any areas of darkness. And that, Father God, you would more than bless him and restore to him what he has graciously given out of the blessing of his own heart to these his own people, these women. And Father, we just thank you. You are the Holy Spirit. You are the Father and the Son, and you are God. And all of the wealth on the hills is yours, your provider. And everything that, human, I feel you need to give him a number and believe him to bring you that finance will be restored and given to you in Jesus' name. Amen. The number is $200,000. We believe you for it, Lord. We call it forth in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you. Mary. Father, many years ago, you gave us two by two, two by two, two by two. Father, we are saying that the Esthers must rise up, and I call them forth. But Lord, with the Esthers, there have to be the Mordecais. Mordecai and Esther go together. So I call them both forth, Lord. So I'm asking for the Mordecais to rise up with the Esthers in Jesus' name. And Father, Herman, when Mary was, Faust was talking about Habakkuk 2. Mary, I, as soon as you started speaking, got, got the same thing, Habakkuk 2. But the Lord is saying, what you're doing, he said, art giving life. So, Father God, I'm asking you to bless Herman, bless his murals, and I'm asking for provision, not just for the finances, but I'm asking for provision 
for the every item and article he needs to do your work, Father. And I thank you that you will divine download into him exactly what you want him to do so it flows straight from your heart so that it truly be art giving life in jesus name amen lord i thank you that your footstool is grace mercy especially mercy against this merciless and righteousness and truth and i thank you lord that you are the god of love and that your heart is with this and your promises come true. And I want to declare also the scriptures in the chat page. <laughs> and Philippians 4, 19, and this same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs from his glorious riches, which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. Proverbs 10:22. The blessing of the Lord makes a person rich, and he adds no sorrow with it. 2 Corinthians 9, 8. And God will generously provide all you need. And I thank you, Lord, that even though you have provided for building the tabernacle and, and the Ark of the Covenant and bring in all the artists, um, and those means are also going ahead always in warfare and to take your land to open your gate and I ask for more provision in in this art and even art in other areas than, than painting that there is a breakthrough of of your word of your mercy that this is going to prepare the way as as your people were standing with the Ark of the Covenant into Jordan and opened the, the river to make a way. And <clears throat> that you bring into those artists, even those people supporting it, and the walls the, on which things are going to be painted, that there are strategic walls being prepared. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Shoshana. Mary, and then we will um, go into communion. Mary, were you still going to pray, or did you forget to take your hand down? No. Go ahead. Yes, um, I just forgot to say that Abraham was an Iranian. And Lord, I see Islam coming in when it did as thwarting your plans for Iran. So, Father God, in Jesus' name, I just say it ceases now. And I'm asking, Father, because Jesus Christ has, Christ has paid the price in full, that what the enemy meant is means for evil, I thank you, Lord. You are the God of the impossible. You are the God of miracles. And I ask you to reverse that now in Jesus' name unto your glory your honour and your praise. And I ask, Lord, to wash Iran with your precious blood in Jesus' name. To you be the glory, honour and praise. Amen. 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 And lastly, I, we are, we're at the top of the hour. We're actually over. Um, we want to take communion. I would like to ask Janice Stephenson from um, New Zealand. Since I always butcher your, the name of your country and your language, I want her to lead us in communion. And also, um, Maria Gergerich, if you can help her. Um, Janice, you can do the bread and Maria do the blood, the cup. But before we do that, I want Deb, Deborah Boggs to share about the number 18. Human mentioned 18 murals. And um, Deborah, if you could share briefly on that and pray into it, and then we'll go into communion. A good note to end on. Sure. Yeah. Hebrew. Um, my understanding is the number 18, the, the letter chai in Hebrew is the number uh, 18, and 18 is in, so chai means life. And so the number 18 represents life. And so I think um I think that's so significant 
that that you know the number 18 of the number of murals was confirmed especially if it's about women life freedom it is about it is about the life that that jesus christ died to bring us and the freedom for which he set us free um and the and the women you know in his heart and so i i just wanted just to release that and what came to me as we were praying and then i was thinking about this number 18 is deuteronomy 8 18 promise from the lord um, this is just before they entered into the, the promised land. And he said, but you shall remember the Lord, your God, for it is he who is giving you power to make wealth, that he may confirm his covenant, which he swore to your fathers as it is this day. So, so Father, I thank you for your promise. I thank you that, um, that human gives glory to you that he recognizes that apart from you, he can do nothing, but with you, all things are possible. And I thank you, Father, that you do give us, according to Deuteronomy 8.18, you give human the power to create wealth. And so whether that's his own wealth or whether that is connection, whether that is uh, donors coming forward, whether I just was getting the Cyrus thing that Hillary prayed into. And so, Father, I pray for the Cyruses to come forth. Even those as, as King Cyrus, he wasn't a Jew, but he funded the return and the rebuilding of the temple. So Father, I thank you for even the most un, um, oh, what's the word? Unlikely, unlikely donors, the Cyruses to come forth. But I thank you, Father, that your promise for, for wealth and provision is so that you may confirm your covenant, which you swore to our fathers, to Abraham. Isaac and Jacob and all of their sons. And so, Lord, I just, I just declare that. Human, we just bless you. And we, we, um, we just call it forth. And we stand with you. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Wow. Thank you so much, Deb. I knew you could say it so much better than I could. Um, but let, as we go into communion, let's, let's think about that. And if you were to look at the chat, Lily, just wrote that we are six years from the 50th anniversary of the Islamic revolution in Iran. Of course, we know 50 is Jubilee. It's for freedom. And it's also a divine rest. And so thank you, Lily, for sharing that with us. And also as an encouragement to Human with, with what he is doing as, as, we, um, as we agree. And I think one of the things as we go into communion is to remember that the work and the art form that is taking place in murals and the message, the strong message that is in those murals, that it is for reconciliation, right? As, as blood-bought sons of God, we are ambassadors of reconciliation and it comes from the power of forgiveness the power of prayer and in, in the, the life of Christ that is in us. And Deb just talked about that. And so as we go to communion, let's let's remember that. And I just want to say thank you to everyone that joined us tonight. And Janice and um, Maria, go for it. Oh, uh, um, Father, we thank you that we can taste and see that you are good and in your son is all goodness and all life and um, Jesus you told us that the food of the world would always spoil but it is the bread of life that will um, sustain us throughout our journey with you so we thank you that this bread, bread of life represents your body that was um, just annihilated for us that took the hit so we take the bread today and we remember you, Jesus, and all that you've done. Thank you, Lord. And so, Jesus, you took the cup and, and you said a new covenant you were giving to us, a fresher covenant. And so we thank you, Father, for sending your son, Jesus, and we put you in remembrance of the covenant that you made with humanity, with all Father God, that you poured out your blood for us, Yeshua, so that all humanity could be redeemed and brought back into to relationship with you. I thank you for um, 
what was pointed out tonight, Lord, and how we receive the freedom from you. And so I thank you, Lord, that when we take this cup and we remember what you did for us on the cross, Jesus, that you nailed out every accusation, you nailed every infirmity, you nailed every sickness and disease, you nailed it to the cross. Anything that the devil would use to accuse your people night and day. So today, as we drink this blood as a representation of what you did for us, Yeshua, as we take this, we believe that if there's any infirmity in our bodies or anything we're struggling with internally, that you will begin to heal it because we give you anything that's trespassing against us and we receive what you paid for the fullness with your life. And we believe we're being healed delivered and set free internally and flowing outwardly in Yeshua's name. Amen. And we drink the cup. Amen. Amen. Thank you everyone for joining us and thank you. Thank you human for joining us and sharing your, your story with us and also the work that you're doing. Let Blessings, everyone. Continued prayers for the relations between Iran and Israel and those surrounding Israel. Human, any last words? Yeah, I was so, I'm so sorry I went as long as I did. I can stay on for five or ten minutes if anyone has any questions. I my nine o'clock just canceled itself. So you let me know. If you guys all need to bounce, yeah, it's fine. We can end it. I think I think we're good. Um, Margaret okay, is our tech host, so. Okay. Great. Yes. Thank well, you thank so you all. For, thank you all for having me. Please keep me in your prayers. And you know, if when the provision comes, I'm not going to say yeah. When the provision comes, I will. Uh, I'll let you all know. If you're on Instagram, you can follow Human TV on Instagram. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, everyone. Shalom. Have a great night. Good Shalom. day. Good morning. Bless you. Shalom, shalom. Bye, guys. Shalom, Blessings. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye